On this desk, we've got an AMD system and an Intel system. And if you're playing games, there may be this question that pops through your head. Well, it probably doesn't pop through your head, but for some odd reason, this question has been circulating through my head to the likes where today, we're gonna get an RTX 2080 Ti, we're gonna get a camera that shoots at 1000 FPS, a 240 Hertz monitor, and then we're gonna compare Intel versus AMD for input lag and see if one has an advantage over the other. And we're also gonna throw in a twist, and that is we're gonna include a 1680V2 Xeon, which is a seven-year-old CPU. And this CPU performed phenomenally well when I tested it against the 10900K and also the 3950X. Though with those introductory details out of the way, let's quickly take a look at what these test system configs have in them and then roll those numbers for you guys. Today's video is sponsored by Dashlane. Dashlane is a password manager that is quick to download and powerful in its abilities. So I like to browse local forums, trial new video services like Apple TV, and I don't wanna give out my most important tier one passwords, especially if I'm disconnecting from this service later, and this is where I let Dashlane simply do its thing. With Dashlane, it can autofill and remember these passwords for these websites that you don't visit often, shipping details and also other boring details can be auto-filled too. On top of all that, it can auto-generate complicated passwords and store them too. So if you have become accustomed to using one-word dictionary entered based passwords, and you might want to stop doing that, then all you have to do is download Dashlane, log in, and remember the one master password you set for your Dashlane account. And the rest is history. Now, if you use the link dashlane.com slash techyescity, then you can get Dashlane completely free on your first device. And if you decide you wanna to upgrade to a more premium option, then you can get a further 50% off using the link and the coupon code in the description below. Easy, let's get back to the video. So here's the first system here, Z or a Z490, depending on how you're looking at it. And it's got the 10900K, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 Dominator memory with 3600 megahertz CL16. Now moving over to this system here, We've got the same H115i RGB Platinum cooler cooling the CPU, but this time around we're using an X570 Phantom Gaming X motherboard and a 3950X. It's gonna be using the same memory that we're testing in this system. We're just gonna hop that memory across. And then the last system right here, we've got the X79 with the 1680V2 Xeon with DDR3 CL9 2133 megahertz memory. Then lastly, we've got the Aorus KD25F 240 hertz monitor. This thing has extremely low input lag, which I've tested before, and it's also got very good response times in that they're very fast when you smash the overdrive to the maximum setting. So we just finished up testing and I've decided to go in and throw in a heap more tests within this video. And that is, first of all, we'll do hyperthreading versus no hyperthreading. And then second of all, we're gonna do an AMD graphics card versus an Nvidia graphics card. And within that, we're gonna test, because we're testing two different games, we're gonna test FreeSync versus G-Sync. So I've shot all the results. I'm gonna go edit them out. But essentially I found with uh, Fortnite is that if we play on a local server, we don't get any ping. So we've eliminated the ping variants that could make the results just silly. And so we're eliminating as many factors as possible to give you guys an apples to apples comparison using the same RAM, using the same motherboard manufacturer, using the same monitor. And for this contraption right here, which is on an AMD box, this is a mouse, a Logitech G3, that's been hacked up with an actuation point. So as soon as the left mouse click is actuated, there's a light that comes on. And in conjunction with a high refresh rate monitor, as well as recording at 1000 FPS, we can see and eliminate as much variance as possible to give you guys accurate numbers. Now, another thing as well, within Fortnite, since it does run better on, I found on G-Sync, even on a FreeSync monitor in DX12, I've decided to now test that on the FreeSync variant. So we will get an idea of if G-Sync or FreeSync run better in terms of input latency. But another thing as well, we're throwing in CSGO just to test the AMD versus the NVIDIA graphics card. 
with absolutely no sync on at all. Anyhow, I'm now gonna spend a few hours analyzing all these results for you guys, and we'll come back and see what the verdict is. And now here we are at the conclusion with a hot cup of tea. Ah. And here we are finally now with the results that you may or may not have been waiting for because going through the numbers here, they were pretty uneventful. That's what I'm gonna say. There wasn't any major differences that were worth writing home about. Basically, if you had an older Xeon or you had a new 10900K or a 3950X and you were gaming with a 2080 Ti or a 5700 XT, you've got real no differences there that are going to determine how well you can play a game. And believe me, I'm a big advocate on input lag and also playing competitively. But when we're seeing differences of only a couple of milliseconds at best on average, then it's nothing to worry about. And we'll get onto these numbers anyway, and then we'll talk about things that you should be worrying about if you're a PC gamer. And the first things here, uh, Fortnite was the game that I guess had the biggest difference, if we were to call it that, between the Xeon, the 3950X, and the 10900K, where it scored on average 15.5 milliseconds on the 10900K, going over the 3950X that came second place, 18.3, and then moving over to the Xeon that scored 19.8. And as we said before with uh, Fortnite, we did put it in DX12, we did put the uh, monitor to G-Sync enabled and on the case of the AMD, FreeSync enabled. And we did cap the FPS at 240 FPS in game, not only to give us a different look compared to CSGO, but because this game I found in the past in general runs and gives out the best input lag with these settings enabled. And onto CSGO showed us a similar trend to Fortnite in some ways. And the first thing was we got 12.2 milliseconds average on hyper threading, no hyper threading, it was virtually the same on the 10900K. So it's really not going to make a difference for your games as we did a recent video on this as well. And it really wasn't worth turning off unless one particular game, you could gain some FPS. Move over to the Xeon, that scored 14.6 milliseconds average. And then onto the Ryzen 3950X, that scored 16.3 milliseconds. Though I will quickly point out the best frame we scored in this game. It was seven milliseconds on both the Xeon and the Intel, eight milliseconds on the 3950X. So really the best case scenario that you're going to get out of your hardware isn't a whole lot. If we're looking at averages, it might be a few milliseconds. If we're looking at the best frame that we scored in CSGO, it's one millisecond. And so it's really not going to make a difference between determining whether you're going to be good or bad at a game. Though what about graphics cards? We got here the 2080 Ti and also the 5700 XT. Now I decided to rerun the test on the 3950X because that's got PCIe 4.0. I didn't want any complaints uh, arising from the fact that, hey, you should have tested on the AMD system. So we saw here, when we look at Fortnite, we reran these tests and we got an average time of 18.3 versus 18.2. So there was virtually no difference between these two GPUs in terms of input latency. And this was uh, turning on FreeSync versus G-Sync. Though the best frame was uh, two milliseconds lower at 14 versus 16. So the Nvidia did score out the lowest frame in Fortnite on the 3950X versus the 5700 XT. Though moving over to CSGO, this is where we saw an average of 16.3 milliseconds versus 16.5. And again, we had that best frame of 10 milliseconds versus eight. And we had the worst frame. So it did throw out the averages. If we're looking at the averages in CSGO, it was thrown out by this one anomaly frame that went up to 29 milliseconds. But again, I'm not gonna throw that out because that's part of testing. You've got to average all the results, whether they're good or whether they're bad. And so coming out of these results, at least looking at it from a pure input latency perspective, there was no real difference in input lag between an AMD GPU and an Nvidia GPU, both with FreeSync technology and G-Sync technology turned on versus off in the case of CSGO. They're looking past the graphics cards and looking at the CPU, the memory, the motherboard, the power supply, the SSD, and potentially a hard drive. 
This stuff here, the biggest thing and the biggest takeout for me personally was you wanna make sure that you're not getting any stuttering in your games out of this hardware. So if your frame rates are very smooth, your 1% and 0.1% lows are pretty high in that game, that means you're gonna be playing well in clutch situations. If your 1%, 0.1% lows are dropping, that's where you're getting massive stuttering and that's happening during clutch playing, that's gonna cost you games. So make sure that your hardware isn't stuttering. I think that's the biggest thing to take out of the hardware itself. Though, if we look at it from a pure number perspective, the 10900K did come out a little bit ahead of these other two CPUs, both the Xeon and the 3950X. And of course, that thing's clocked at 5.2 gigahertz. It is an expensive CPU and it's pretty much the best you can get for gaming. So when it scores a couple of milliseconds better, I guess you would expect it to do so. But another thing on top of that is a couple of milliseconds. This is where we're gonna go into the next point of the video, which is way more important for me personally. And that is a couple of milliseconds really just pales in comparison to a monitor with good input lag. I've seen some monitors carry upwards of 50 milliseconds input lag. So if you're playing with that, you're automatically at a massive disadvantage versus a Xeon versus a 10900K versus a 3950X. Another thing too is the mouse. If you're using a bad mouse with input lag, I've seen mice with like 10, 20 milliseconds input lag. If you've got a crap mouse, that's gonna be adding input lag to the chain. So if you've got a bad monitor, bad mouse, you could be adding anywhere upwards of 70 milliseconds just on these two devices alone. Then of course, the last factor, we've got your internet connection. So if you're playing games online and you've got a poor internet connection or you live very far from the servers, you're gonna be adding another 50, 100, or even 200 milliseconds to your total system delay. And so that will cost you games. So when it comes down to a hardware perspective, yes, there are some very minimal advantages to be gained, but I would make sure that everything else in your pipeline is working to the best of its abilities. Going into this, I was hoping for a bigger discrepancy that would have made it more exciting, but sometimes the news just isn't that exciting. Though one thing that we can look at finally is if you're using your computer for competitive gaming, one thing that I've always done in the past and one thing I do recommend going forward is always use the USB ports at the top of your motherboard. And the reason you should be using these USB ports is that they're generally connected directly to the CPU, giving you technically the best input latency. Though with all that out of the way, if you guys enjoyed today's video, then be sure to give us a like. Also, let us know in the comment section below what you think of input latency and how do you get the best results yourself? Is there some tips and tricks that you've noticed with particular games or with particular hardware that has netted you some better results? Love reading your thoughts and opinions as always, but going forward from here, I will say, when it comes to testing CPU and memory and some of these individual components, I'm probably gonna stop it at this video because two to four milliseconds really isn't a whole lot and it's nothing as we said before compared to your monitor and mouse another thing is too is that the games i'm more focused on them i found some games can carry a pretty big input delay themselves for instance i've tested ashes of the singularity in the past and that's had some pretty bad input delay as opposed to CSGO and Fortnite, they've got really low input delay. Meaning that the engines that they've designed for these games have been very well designed for PC to the point where you have very little input delay. And that's what you want ultimately for competitive play. And now we've got the question of the day, which comes from Unfortunate Son, and they ask, where can I buy used parts that are not broken? And basically I've talked about used parts for years here on the channel. Quick and easy answer is, buy local make sure it works before you buy it that's the best thing you can do if you're buying online buy off a reputable seller someone that has really good feedback so if you're going online and you're buying off someone that says this thing works so well but i tested it one year ago and they got zero feedback there's a pretty good chance that that part might be broken so with that in mind local check out the parts make sure and verify they're working online reputable seller you're good to go you shouldn't be getting hosed well, you should rarely be getting hosed if you do those two things. Hope that answers that question and I'll catch you in another tech video very soon. Peace out for now. And if you stay this far, ring the, ring the sub and the bell. Bye. Oh, 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 oh.